All right, guys, we're back again. Another great episode of PFREI. I'm your host, Fuquan Bilal. Glad to be back again. And today, we actually have something different from you guys. And Aaron, you're the first to be on the show that does what you do. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So Aaron Letzizer. I said it. it. Yes, I got it. There you go. (laughs) Is here today from Obi. And we're going to talk a little about real estate and we're going to talk a little about the specialty that they do, which is insurance. Um, but before we get into that, let's just talk about your background. I know you talked about um, you and your brother dabbled in real estate or do some stuff in real estate. And then, you know, you guys opened this business up. Let's talk about that journey in real estate. When did you start it? Um, and just a little bit speak to your experience about uh, real estate. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the uh, on the podcast today. I uh, appreciate it. Um, and, and like you mentioned, um, so started OB uh, originally with with my brother, Ryan. Uh, he's my co-founder. We haven't killed each other yet. Um, his background professionally was uh, was real estate private equity. So he was one of the bigger guys uh, in the space going around buying, uh, you know, apartments, single family rental portfolios, um, you know, the, the, the value adds, the, the fix and flips, non-performing debt portfolios. Um, he had he had really gotten me uh, the, the real estate investing bug into my ear. Uh, we started building a, a small portfolio, and my background was uh, was insurance and uh, just a, a serial entrepreneur. Started and grown a couple other companies, but uh, always had an interest in real estate. And what we like to tell people is, you know, Ryan Ryan got sick of buying insurance, uh, yeah, the same way, and and I, I generally got sick of selling it the exact same way, um, especially as an investor, um, especially given how how insurance is one of the larger line item expenses that people have. So that's really how how Obi was born. We're an insurance technology company that is specific to the small to medium sized residential real estate investors in the US um, and just trying to make that that process uh, a little bit more transparent a little less painless uh, or a little less painful than uh, you know the the, the typical uh, insurance experience that people have had with fax machines and spreadsheets and, and PDF applications over the last several decades that's awesome bringing some technology to, to the space to make it easier this is a great topic. Aaron, because um, I have some some pain points or pet peeves, I guess, that I, I kind of want to discuss. And it's good to have this free consultation with you. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so, that's why I'm here. In- insurance. Uh, no multifamily, just uh, regular residential one through four nationwide. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do anything that's uh, we'll do anything residential. So it can be a single unit condo. You know, the accidental landlord, right, bought the condo, but didn't want to sell it because you got a great interest rate. And so you moved into your first starter home all the way up to large multifamily portfolios. Okay. So we do folks that have large apartment complexes, um, you know, two, three, four, 500 million in assets under management. Um, still, you know, what, what I would consider, at least in the apartment space, that that SMB owner, right? It's not the Blackstones or the Gray Stars of the world. Um, it's folks that have, you know, syndicated some deals uh, or, or, you know, picked up some of these, uh, some of these apartment communities on a, on a deal by deal basis. So we, we span the gamut and yes, the answer to your question, we're, we're nationwide. So we cover, um, we cover every state uh, in the U S if it's a one to four unit property, we can actually do that instantly online um, in every state. I will caveat that. And as most of your listeners know, especially if they've been investing in the Southeast uh, market, which has been quite popular over the last decade, um, that one's been hit by a lot of hurricanes, a lot of, uh, a lot of catastrophic risk exposure. So insurance is always a little tricky, but um, it's a very interesting time in the market, uh, especially given the, the interest rate environment, the overall real estate environment, and then how uh, insurance pricing is obviously impacting camp rate and uh, and NOI on a lot of these assets. Yeah, I, I just had to strategically structure a deal to not increase the insurance cost by buying the LLC and assuming the debt and keeping yeah. thing exactly the way it is. Because if we buy it, insurance doubles. And I'm just scratching my head like, why? Right? Yeah. Why is that? Why is it so, multifamily I'm speaking about, why is it so expensive per door? Literally one year later, it's just almost double. And I'm like, I I don't understand. It's the same building, same area, same exact thing. The current owner, when they renew, it's not going up. It's staying exactly the same. But when it's a new sale, it's, yep. you know, it's crazy, almost double. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, one, one thing I'll tell your listeners too is, you know, and, and anybody that's done a couple of deals should already know this, but, you know, you definitely want to do your diligence on, on the, the rates, right. That the, that the listing or the sales broker, right. The investment sales broker has thrown into the offering memorandum. Um, 
because they're, they, you know, they, they might be that, that, that T12 insurance rate to your point, exactly the experience that you had. They're just kind of maybe adding five to 7% on that on pro forma for the next 12 months. And that's what you're seeing in the offering memorandum. And so you're expecting, Hey, insurance, you know, sure. It'll go up a little bit. Um, and then you, you know, you go hard on cash you get your LOI accepted. And then suddenly you get, you know, you find out that the insurance company, because you're a new client generating a new policy with new rates under the current rate structure, um, you know, you're, you're going to get a very different rate than what the existing owners, uh, going to have. And that, that doesn't always happen. Um, but the reason is really, you know, it's a, it's a perfect storm, uh, no pun intended, given that that's, that's how, uh, insurance gets a ton of claims, you know, you've got a couple of things going on. One, one is um, there's an increased prevalence of, of you know, severe weather events, right? And why that's happening is always going to be up for debate. But nonetheless, the way that people have done, you know, these thousand year models uh, in terms of how many, how many storms on average across a period of time are going to hit Florida, hit Texas, hit Houston, right? Hit Louisiana or the East Coast. Um, you know, some of those are just kind of getting thrown out altogether. Uh, there's a lot of unpredictability in terms of some of these weather events that have been occurring. And then beyond that, you also have inflation going on as well. And so one of the big pieces that I think a lot of the insurance companies have been paying attention to over the last several years, because it wasn't a big deal, is replacement cost, right? That's some of the other things that have been happening is that, you know, you might be you might be still at, you know, 65, 70, $70, $5 a square foot, right? Because that's what your insurance rates were originally quoted on and your limits five years ago when you bought the deal. And you really haven't thought about necessarily updating that, right? You're just taking the renewal every year and you, you hope that you're covered. Well, there's no place in the US that you could probably rebuild for less than $120 a square foot in this market. But unless you really look at that and it's an uncomfortable you know, inflection point because you recognize your rates are going up, but then they're going to go up even more because of the fact that you actually haven't updated some of those coverages in a couple of years. And that that's another important piece too, because you don't want to just rebuild three quarters of your property, right? You want to be able to rebuild the entire thing. And so with a, a few of those items that are happening in the space, it's just, it's a, it's a domino effect in terms of all the different pieces that are now just collectively driving up prices for a lot of these different carriers. Got it. So do you record so portfolio insurance versus insurance on a single act uh asset so my only pet peeve with that is from my experience if i have a different lenders on different properties if it's a policy that's a portfolio policy if there's an issue with one property all the people that's in the policy get a notification right and that yep. is like painful for someone who has nothing to do with this property over here sending me an email going, hey, what's up with this? Is it going to affect the policy? How do yep. you strategically separate that from the notifications? You're shaking your head because I'm pretty sure you know about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, how do you, I mean, how do you listen. Not put, because we want to get the benefit of the portfolio insurance, right? It's, it's, a, it's easy. It's simple. It's, it's done. But, you know, we don't want the other lost payees to be notified on things that's not theirs. How do we get around that? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm shaking my head and laughing here because that, that's what we hear a lot, right, on a weekly basis. What, what I can tell you and probably any of your listeners is I would say, like, find an agent, find a brokerage that specializes in this space. Um, and the reason being is a, is, a, is a few things. One, you know, you, you want to find somebody that, that doesn't just, you know, maybe quote an apartment or quote a single family rental, you know, a couple of times a month, right? Like you want this to be your bread and butter. And there's a lot of folks throughout the U.S., a lot of folks that we, 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 uh, uh, we work with collectively. We even provide our, our product and our policy out to different agents across the country, um, as well as directly to some of our partners um, and the lenders in the U.S. You really want to find somebody that knows and understands this space. And the reason being is that that means that they've got enough volume with some of these carriers that they have a strong relationship, right? Underwriters and these, these sales reps at the carriers, they're also incentivized by how much business they close as well. So they're going to work more closely with somebody that that generates a lot of business for them versus just kind of the Joe Schmo agent that might send them a deal or two, maybe, you know, once in a blue moon. And so I say that because you want to take advantage, as you said, of the simplicity and the pricing of a portfolio deal, right? You want to have one effective date. You don't want to have 10 different locations. They all got 10 different effective dates throughout the the uh, you know the year you got ten different escrow checks you got to be sending out right at all different times you're getting those letters that you just talked about and so the way that I would do that is any shop that is that is specialized even if it's not the only thing that they do but they're specialized in real estate investment assets 
they're going to know and understand that escrow process, that payment process. And so they really, I think, proactively do a lot of work to make sure that you have all the notifications that you need. And you're also getting notified in the event a policy may end up getting one of those notices of non-pay, right? Or a pending notice of cancellation, because it's a lot of work for the agent as well, right? I hate getting those letters because then I got to track down a lot of that stuff. And so what we built at Obi and what I know a lot of the other shops that specialize in this space do is they proactively set up systems to make sure that they are collectively working with you, your lender or your escrow company, as well as the carrier to make sure that carrier also knows that the check's on the way, right? Because as everybody listening knows, the escrow companies love to take their time, right? To cut that check, right? You send them an invoice today, that policy goes into effect, you know, 45 days from now, they're going to cut that check on day 44 and ship it off, right? And so because of that, you want to have that really good, clear line of communication because then I can proactively send out a note to one of these carriers that we have a strong relationship with because we do a ton of business with them and say, hey, listen, escrow company cut the check. It's in the mail. You don't have to send out that notice, right? That we all know is coming on day 30 when it hasn't actually been paid yet. And so those are the things that I think if you work with a specialist in this space, you run into that, that you know, you run into fewer issues while then still being able to take advantage of the type of program that you know, you find very attractive for your portfolio. Yeah, I think my my pet peeve is mostly like, you know, you're doing fix and flips and the agent goes out, they take the company goes out photos and you don't reach the mm -hmm. at time, that specific timeline because you're waiting on variance permits or whatever. Or they go yep. out and see that the property is not something that they that was underwritten correctly because maybe the, the agent didn't disclose, you know, that the property is going to be. Yeah a new construction or it's going to be a full gut rehab you know whatever it was um i just like you said there's a communication breakdown between the investor and the agent probably and i think sometimes that they go out and see that it's not what they thought it was and they may say well i'm not going to renew or i'm canceling or you know yep. it's growth of grass and you have 10 days to repair or cracks in the of the porch and we're like well we're replacing the porch anyway we're waiting for permits and you don't do it yep. in the timeline, you start getting those cancellation notices. That's what I was saying. But you're saying is this more of having somebody in the mix who understands the product to communicate with everyone on all ends. Yeah. And I, and I think, again, like I, you know, we we don't like getting those notices, right, uh, in, inside of our, our office because we get copied on all of those. And so I think, again, if you if you either way, regardless of its payments or or uh, the recommendations, right, from the onsite inspections or potential cancellations for underwriting stuff. If you work with that specialist, we have a system even in place that tracks those inspection wrecks, right? You need to replace the, uh, you know, the sidewalk, right? You need to fix the crack. You need to put a railing up on, uh, on the, you know, on the porch, right? We have processes then in place. And I think a lot of folks that specialize in this space do, or at least should, and that those are the types of agencies you should be looking for that I know exactly when those due dates are. And so we proactively work with you to say, Hey, listen, you, you've applied for that permit. If I get if I get a copy of that that permit application, I can ship that off to the carrier. I can probably buy you another thirty to sixty days, right? And if we get notice from the carrier then that they're going to extend that, it creates another task inside of our system to then make sure that we're following up with you and say, hey, like, did the actual permit get get granted? If it did, great, give me a copy of it. I'll send it off. Maybe I'll buy you another sixty days, right? It's really about having that good conversation and that communication flow, um, so you don't end up having that that communication breakdown. Got it. Got it. Yeah. What are, what are, so you have, um, you know, different types of policies that we have, which is the builder's risk, right? If someone is doing mm -hmm. heavy renovation, they go from a builder's risk. And then when they finish the risk of renovation, they'll get a vacant policy. Um, and then basically if it's a rental, then it, once the tenant gets in there, then it's an actual rental policy, which is cheaper, the cheapest of them all, right? The, the yep. builder's risk is the most expensive. And what I tend to do is go, Okay, I'm not going to get the six month policy with the agent is trying to sell me my belief and I could be wrong or correct me. If I cancel that six month policy, I'm less likely to be refunded the difference of that on a per diem basis. But if I get an yes. annual policy and I cancel the annual policy, I get it all back on a per diem basis. So that's kind of what we do. Is that is that correct? Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, I, again, caveat, it depends by carrier. But yeah, typically your six month builder's risk policy is what's known as fully earned, right? So you're not getting anything back from it. Uh, you can get your work done in two weeks, you can get it done in two months, you can get it done in, you know, five months in a, you know, 29 days. Um, you're typically not going to get anything back from that. 
There are carriers absolutely that are out there that on a 12 month policy will provide you a prorated refund, right? Or they'll have what's known as a minimum earned premium period. And what usually for most of those, those policies, it's 25% minimum earned. That means that if you cancel the day after you bound that policy, you're still on the hook for that 25%. But as long as you get outside of that, right? So on a 12 month policy, you get outside of that three month period, that 25% period, you can cancel then for typically a prorated refund. And so that's that's something that we look at from folks. The other thing that I would tell you too is, you know, there are there are policies that exist out there that don't require you to take that second step, right? It doesn't require you to go from a builder's risk to a vacant and then to a landlord policy. There are a lot of policies right now, including you know the 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 uh, you know the the one for Obi um, that we built internally here that that provides you effectively coverage for what's known as held for rent, right? Now you can't hold it for rent forever. But if you flipped that policy or you flipped that property, it's ready to go. You've thrown it up on Zillow. It's up on hot pads. Um, and you're waiting to get a renter in there. There are policies now that do provide you with a certain period of like vacancy held for rent coverage. That way you don't have to go across kind of like these three different policy transactions that exist. You can get that 12 month builder's risk, cancel it at six or seven months if you need to, and then immediately put on a, a you know landlord policy that gives you that types of flexibility. You're not going through all the different transactions. You're paying for the policy fees that are never refundable. Um, it really gives you some good continuity in terms of that coverage. Yeah, if you made one from builder's risk to vacant, if you have one, that would be amazing because for the flips, not rentals, they can transition into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've always got to, you know, I've, I've, what, what we've done at Obi is, you know, we, Ryan and I kind of got, you know, we, we got, we got, uh, we were unhappy with like what the what the overall market was providing in this space, and that's really where OB ended up coming coming to fruition. And so we built our own insurance products uh, internally here. And while we haven't done it yet, the thing that I would love to be able to get to, especially as fix and flip continues to be a really popular uh, real estate investment strategy, is I don't I never understood why you couldn't build the two of them together, right? Just combine both policy contracts and say this is your builder's risk coverage until about you know, 30 days after you get a certificate of occupancy, right? And then your landlord coverage basically starts at that point, right? But put them all together. And then that also alleviates your frustration and your concern that you just had in terms of like, you know, I got to get this first policy, then I got to get the second policy, I got to get this third policy. Why not build all of that in there together? And then just say, listen, like, if you're not, you know, if you're not doing any renovation, then the, the builder's risk portion of this wouldn't actually apply, right? And then you can kind of blend those, those costs, as well together across those different policy types to get to to a point where, yeah, your builder's risk is kind of expensive, the, the vacant's a little expensive and your landlord policy is okay, but you can get a full 12 month policy that covers all of those different items. And I think one day that's that's where I would love Obi to get. We can still provide each one of those individual type policies that you just talked about, but I think as the market continues to evolve, that's, that's the way that insurance should continue to evolve as well. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, it's it's um I'm glad that I had you on because you're the first uh insurance company that I actually interviewed. And people don't really understand the importance of of understanding those different types of insurance, the replacement costs that we talked about. Um, and you know, looking at the policy that's offered, like I don't get terrorist insurance. Like, what do I need that for? I'm not in New York yeah. World Trade Center. So you can actually look at the policy and strip it down to just what you need, right? Because most brokers, no pun intended. It's going to give you the whole kitchen sink. You need this, you need that, you need this. They're going to give you everything and say, hey, review this and let me know if it's good and expecting yeah. for you to actually look at it and go, you don't need this, you don't need this, you don't need that. So I, I like brokers that educate me on the process and go, hey, do you really need this? Do you really need that? Because that tells me they're not looking out for themselves. They're looking out for me as the investor and trying to trim the fat off of it and also educating me saying, hey, you don't, you should never get a six month builder's risk. You should get a year cancel it, get credit. You know, I know, I understand they get chargebacks probably for selling a product and then got to pay it back, but it's good business, right? Because you're going to have a repeat customer. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, again, you, you get that typically with a specialist and, and to your point, you, you know, you might feel like you don't need terrorism coverage, but Fannie and Freddie and an Arbor and kind of take your pick of multifamily lenders, they're going to require that. Right. And I think the the piece to it is, you know, a lot of our clients feel like they don't need it. Right. They're in they're in kind of rural areas or in the southeast. Um, they're in up and coming kind of uh, uh, areas where they're, they're buying these multifamily assets. They don't feel like they need the, the, the terrorism coverage. Right. And it's expensive. It's not as expensive as the policy, but it's certainly an added cost. 
And I think trying to find a good long-term relationship with your agent or your broker, and that person can then be an advocate to go to the lender and say, hey, listen, I know that this is a requirement, but you know the, the, the policy is already increasing, right? It's getting to a point where you know, our client might be concerned about the debt service coverage ratio or just the overall increase of the, the, the piece. They're requesting a waiver on the terrorism coverage. And it's one of those pieces where if you don't ask, you don't know, right? Much like anything in life. If, if you don't ask, you don't get. And we have seen those types of waivers, right? Whatever, whatever that kind of ancillary coverage is that the lender may require, we've been pretty successful in getting those different types of waivers as long as there's a good reason as to why. Because that person isn't looking at saying, "Hey, this this is a you know this is a high rise apartment building in New York City, or you know it's a you know it's a it's a garden uh, garden style you know apartment in in Houston, Texas, right?" They're not looking at that. They're looking at what the requirement is, and so I think that's that's the biggest thing. And finding a really good advocate then that can work through that with you. And the other piece, you know, final piece I'll say on it is, you know, that I think the challenge inherently with the insurance market is that it's just so disconnected that even for you to want to try and make any changes to that quote that 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 broker provided right like maybe you want to play around with the different endorsements maybe you want siding matching protection or or roof matching right like all the different list of endorsements that a travelers or a nationwide anybody can provide that requires that broker or that agent to go back to the carrier and ask for each one of those different combinations and so each one of those is basically a different pdf right and so it's just a, such a time consuming process that you know, the best thing that you can do is is start to familiarize yourself with the actual policy. Find an agent that's willing to sit there with you, especially on that first run or that first go around, or as you're starting to build a new relationship with them. Say, what does this actually do? Do I need this? Do I not need this? Should we look at adding ordinance and law? Should we look at adding water backup? Does that make sense? Right? What deductible makes sense um, based on this preferred portfolio? based on what your risk tolerance is. Maybe you want a $50,000 deductible. Maybe you want a $1,000 deductible. Both of those have very different implications, but you want somebody that you can build that long-term relationship with and can be that advocate as you're working through that process. Absolutely, absolutely. One last question I do have for you is as far as the interface, we started off talking about the technology and everything else that differentiate you guys from the rest. Um, are you able just to go onto the platform and enter information and get a a, um, a a cost breakdown and get a um oh my god a court form from the system is it that easy yep. to do it yeah yeah so we uh you can you can go directly to the website it's obinsurance.com obie insurance.com um, if it's a you, you can put any type of habitational risk directly in there um, in the event that uh if it's a one to four unit property as long as it's about a you know under a million dollars in replacement cost, I can generally generate a quote almost uh, anywhere in the U.S. Right, my you know South Miami might be a little challenging, Southeast Houston might be a little challenging, depending on on exactly where it's at, how old the house is. But for the most part, we can generate an instantly bindable rate for any one to four unit, you know, up to about a million dollars in replacement cost structure anywhere in the U.S. And the nice thing about that, before I get into apartments, is that really provides owners with, I think, the the flexibility and the, the ability to really be the master of their own destiny. They get to the end of that process and we'll show them a rate at the end of that that's instantly bindable. And they can they can play around with all the coverages that they want, right? They can play around with the deductible, the endorsements, the limits, the coverages, and then they will dynamically see that price change. So they get to make that choice, right? Finally, I think your insurance line item becomes something that you've made an active decision on because this is the type of coverage you want or don't want. Right, depending on what your risk tolerance is. If it's above four units or if, it, if it's above a million dollars in replacement cost, I can't do that instantly, um, but we can turn it around pretty quickly. So people can still make that submission uh, online. It goes directly to the team here. We take a look at it. Uh, we'll reach out if we need any additional information. And then the last thing too that we're, we're very good on, and I think technology helps with, is if you're at the LOI stage, especially for large apartments, in the event that you know you want to gut check what that you know that investment sales broker threw into the offering memorandum, or you want a general estimate that's going to come probably within five to ten percent of where the actual bindable rate comes in, uh, that's really where OB shines. Uh, you can send us a deal really anywhere in the U.S. that you're you know in a best and final pool. You want to double check the uh, the per door rate. Um, that's something that we can turn around pretty quick for folks. You feel very comfortable going hard on cash, knowing that the price for the insurance is going to be generally around the rate that we're able to provide. 
That's awesome. I really appreciate you coming on today and adding value, man. Let's give the audience a place where they can reach out to you and get more information. Yeah, best place is uh, on the website or you can email me directly. Uh, my email address is Aaron at obinsurance.com, O-B-I-E insurance.com, or you can go directly to the website and submit a quote there. Awesome, guys. Another great episode, PFRI, a passion for real estate investments. You can catch us on YouTube. Be sure to like and share, and you can catch us on all, all the other uh, platforms where you can catch a really, really good, cool, great, awesome podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Please tell a friend, tell a friend. See you guys at the next one.